All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about wetlands and estuaries. First, we're going to talk about wetlands. So what is a wetland? So if you look at the name wetland, we see the word wet and we see the word land. So we can assume that it's land that's wet, which is perfectly correct. It's the transition zone between our dry land and our bodies of water. And the land doesn't drain the water very well. It drains a little bit, but not very well. So when water enters wetland, the ground is becomes saturated with water, meaning it's so full of water that eventually the water can't go underground anymore and it starts to float in uh, and stay on the surface. And that's why uh, wetlands are often covered with that shallow water. Now, there are a lot of different types of wetlands. Some of it can have fresh water, some can have salt water, but all wetlands play a very important role in our watershed. So rules wetlands play in the watershed. Wetlands play an important part in our water quality control and functions for the watershed. So when we talk about water quality control, we're talking about um, the water that travels through our watershed being cleaned. And wetlands do a very good job of cleaning that water. So think of wetlands kind of like nature's sanitary sewers. Systems, when we talked about sanitary sewer systems earlier, we were talking about all that dirty water going underground pipes to a facility where it gets cleaned so that way we can use it and be safe when we use that water. Wetlands do the same thing. Water travels through the watershed. It hits a wetland and the wetland's going to clean that water, which makes it safe for the animals and for us. It also helps function as a way to regulate the flowing water in the lands. Um, so all the water that's flowing through a watershed, it's not going to end up going too fast. Once it hits the wetland, it kind of slows down, which is really important. So the first rule you should remember about wetlands is wetlands improve water quality. So runoff can carry a lot of pollution as it travels through the watershed. And remember, runoff is the surface water as it's going down. Um, we see a lot of runoff after a heavy rain. Uh, if you look outside, all that flowing water on the streets, that's runoff. So wetlands can improve the quality of that water by doing these things. One, it filters out the pollution, and it does this by two, the wetlands in the, the plants in the wetlands can take up that pollution through capillary action. And then three, the bacteria that live in the wetlands can also break down those pollutions. So as runoff that carries pollution enters a wetland, that wetland's going to do its job and help filter out some of that pollution. The second role that wetlands play is wetlands help minimize flooding. So wetlands are nature's sponges. If you're going to remember anything about wetlands, it's that wetlands act like a sponge. So runoff sometimes carries um, sediments. So if you remember when water flows really fast, it has more energy to pick up more sediments. So dirt and rocks and soils and the faster the flow, the more sediments it's going to carry. And when that hits a wetland, the wetland acts like a sponge and it's going to slow down that um, flow of water and it's going to absorb some of it. So as the water slows down when it comes into a wetland, some of it's going to also infiltrate into the groundwater. So remember, groundwater is water underground. So when that happens, because it's slowing it down and acting like a sponge, it's going to minimize that fl flooding, which brings us to the third rule. It helps control erosion. So erosion, remember, is the transportation from one area to another. Um, so too much runoff that is caused from heavy like rains and stuff causes a lot of erosion, especially if the water is flowing really fast. Wetlands do a really good job, again, slowing that water down. And the plants that are found along and inside the wetland, those roots help keep that soil together. So runoff slows down and erosion can be controlled. The fourth role that you should remember is wetlands recharge groundwater. So remember groundwater is water found underground. So some water flows through the surface on, in our watershed and some of it flows underground and wetlands can help recharge underground water. So as water is absorbed by the wetland, we call that infiltration. So think about infiltration, like infiltrating, you're going into something and the water travels deep underground and gets filtered or cleaned as it travels through the underground thing. So think of it like a, like a Brita filter. If you were to cut that in half, you see all the different layers. And as the water travels through your Brita filter, it gets cleaner and cleaner. Wetlands do the same thing. And it can refill our aquifers, which are porous rocks underground that hold a lot of water. And we can drill into aquifers and make wells to help get clean water. So wetlands are 
playing a role in helping clean out that water, contributing to our underground water supply that we can access later. So in this picture, we have a picture of wetlands recharging. So you see the arrows and the top picture going down. Recharging means that the water is going underground, getting filtered and be being able to be accessed later. Discharge is when wetlands are so full that the water is not able to go underground and it's gonna go up and then flow out on the surface. The fifth role that wetlands play is wetlands support wildlife. So if you ever go to a wetland, um, you'll notice that there are a lot of different animals that live and rely on wetlands. Um, one, it provides habitats to almost one third of the rare and endangered species. Um, it provides food and shelter for fish and their offspring, so their babies. And it also provides nesting and resting areas for birds. So a lot of wildlife depend on wetlands too. So in this picture, we have a diagram and it's just a simple diagram showing how a wetland functions. So I want you to take a moment, you're gonna pause the video and I need you to describe in your own words based on what we just talked about, what, um, it, how does a wetland work or how does it function? So if you're listening, it means you took a minute, you paused the video and you, you're done writing. So your writing should have had something about wetlands, um, being nature's sponge, water travels into a wetland, wetlands slow it down, it filters things out, it cleans up pollution, um, and then the water can keep going through the watershed. So wetlands are found towards the bottom of our watershed on its way out to a large body of water, and it's going to slow that runoff down, help clean it, um, cause less pollution, and make a nice home for animals. So next I need you to think about, so wetlands play lots of different roles. What happens though if we decided to fill in a wetland to build new housing developments full of condos, shops, and parking garages, which is something that happens quite often. Um, the more people come to areas, the more space that we need to take up, and wetlands are usually found like near pretty bodies of water. People want to live there and they're going to fill them in, that way they can live in these nice areas. But because wetlands have so many different roles, what do you think would happen if we decided to fill that in? So take a moment, pause the video, and write down your response, and then we're gonna share these responses in class tomorrow. Now we're gonna talk about estuaries. So wetlands are bodies of water that are wet. Um, they serve as uh, filtration for pollution and help stop erosion. Um, estuaries are similar to wetlands as, and they look very similar when you see them out in nature. An estuary though is found where fresh river water meets salty ocean water. So you're going to find our estuaries um, on the like coastlines of our lake of the United States. Um, they're usually in bays or inlets um, and in an estuary you're going to find brackish water and that's just a fresh and salt water mixture. So right here we have a diagram of a typical estuary where you have fresh water turning into brackish water and then it's marine, so ocean water. And your estuaries are, it's easy to identify an estuary if you're on a coastline by the ocean. So if it's anywhere where a fresh river water meets salty ocean water, you can call that an estuary. So estuaries roles in a watershed, they function very similar to a wetland, except they're found along a coast and they're gonna have salty brackish water. Um, estuaries are great nurseries for wildlife due to the rich nutrients and abundance of plat plant life that you find in an estuary. And they help shelter um, animals from like the dangers of the ocean and stuff like that. So a lot of animals depend on estuaries to um, breed and reproduce. So we have pictures of an estuary where we have a river meeting the ocean. And in there you might find sharks that use it as a nursery, lots of fish use it as a nursery, and lots of birds will use it as a nursery and a refuge from um, the elements. Now, the largest estuary in the United States is the Chesapeake Bay, which is very close to where we live. Um, and if you've ever gone there, it's beautiful. So that's something very special and nice to know that is very close to us. Now, near an estuary, we can find tidal wetlands, coming back to those wetlands. And wetlands are that are tidal wetlands are wetlands located near an estuary or ocean coast. So it'll be tidal wetland, estuary, ocean. And then the water in a tidal 
wetland can be either just salt water or brackish water like an estuary. Now in your notes, the last thing I need you to do is answer the question, how can we tell the difference between an estuary and a wetland? And then in class tomorrow, we're gonna to discuss all the things that you've written and keep on moving along.